guys, it is Friday, about 7, 7 p.m. right now. We have Jin with us, we have Chris behind the camera. Uh, Micah's gonna show up here any second. T tonight we'll focus on wheat fields again. We have cut wheat fields here. We have the, the, our bone yard right now, so we have, we had 11 hogs here. Uh, most of them got uh, dragged away, so now we have a few left. I'm gonna start the video on a high note and hopefully we can end it on a high note then too. Um, I have my new sidearm set up. Let's say Walter uh, PPQ Tech. Uh, I have a new suppressor on it, it's the Obsidian 9. I already had the Obsidian 45 on my HK40. I uh, was pretty happy with it. Uh, love the fact that it's modular so you can take, on, uh, take off a module in the front, reduces some of the baffles, uh, ultimately gives you a shorter um, length. Um, one issue I had with the old setup, I had this drop leg uh, holster. Now the Obsidian 45 is still a little long and then my holster was just sitting pretty low. At some point I had this, uh, this can hit my leg down there and I was pretty uncomfortable. Um, so I want to try something new. Different gun, different suppressor, um, but also different uh, holsters. So it's a you know, belt height, um, it's a one Tigris uh, holster with a belt. Hopefully that will be, uh, give me a better setup. So it definitely rides much higher, but um, you know it's still accessible. But let's let's get to it. I want to shoot this uh, this PPQ. It's the first time I'm shooting it. It was the first time I'm shooting the Obsidian 9. Uh, let's see how loud that thing is. Uh, if it's too loud, which I don't think it is, we could always run the the extra module in the front just to reduce the decibel just some more. But um, I'm hoping that this setup uh, will work out fine. I put a stream light. That's the TLR4 on it, has a laser uh, built in and the light laser because um, while these uh, sights are a little higher than usual, it still doesn't clear the Obsidian 9. So that laser will, will help with uh, you know target acquisition or aiming. Let's get to it, let's shoot a few rounds and see how it sounds. <coughs> There you have it, uh, hearing safe for sure, uh, it's pretty quiet, maybe not as quiet as the Obsidian 45 and the HK uh, VP40, that setup has been pretty quiet and I'm always amazed being out, you know, and shooting, uh, having to dispatch a hawk or something, taking these shots. It is pretty quiet. This, I think, has some funny acoustics to it right now, but I think it might be because of the setup here at the field. Um, so I was hearing some funny echoes, I think. But uh, pretty quiet, definitely uh, fine shooting in that length. Can definitely recommend as a uh, choice for a 9mm uh, suppressor. There are a few others out there too, um, but I'm a fan of Rugged. I like the unlimited warranty, lifetime. Um, uh, the one I don't have yet is the Radiant 762, uh, something I'm looking into getting hopefully at some point. Um, we have a pretty interesting project coming up with a very lightweight AR-10. It's a uh, rifle which utilizes actually magnesium for the handguard and the receiver set. That AR-10 with a 16 inch barrel, um, regular furniture like a minimalist uh, buttstock and so forth is weighing in at 5.68 pounds. So that's ridiculously lightweight. I don't want to ruin that by adding a heavy uh, a can to the front of it. So I'm trying to get a pretty lightweight uh, suppressor, but I also want to get one which is short. Uh, so I do want to get this sweet spot of uh, short, but still quiet and light. And I think the Radiant actually checks these boxes because again, it's a modular uh, suppressor, um, pretty lightweight, I think it comes in at about 12 ounces, but pretty happy with the setup. I think it's gonna be great tonight. I'm sure we get, we're gonna get some use out of it. But let's get all wrapped up. Um, let's get the K&M unloaded, and uh, then we'll go get some, get some hawks on the ground. See you in a bit. Cornfield uh, looked like 
there's some more damage in there. We'll probably see it as we drive down there now, that one lane we took down last time. We also have a full, full moon tonight, so that might get a little tricky. But that's, that's the reason why we brought, uh, brought Warsty along, because he would be pretty visible at night, and uh, maybe you can, he can persuade a few of those hogs to, uh, to move in. Wasn't here last time. See these little holes right here? Yeah. Just a couple. Yeah. Rooted through. You haven't left until you wipe your butt with some corn husks. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Is it feel good or <laughs> is it? I guess it's hey man, in that situation, I didn't care. Okay, <laughs> I didn't have to use my hand. That stuff was was good enough. It's a pretty high grit stuff, man. Dude, a race of action. I just had it coming. Okay, <laughs> there was no time to think. Borsty, our faithful pig. We heard some pigs already behind the tree line. We just parked the canine right next to it. Tucked it in behind the, the brush a little bit. Pigs are usually coming in at this corner down here. Micah's just testing the wind. And it's blowing a little bit back there. So that's not ideal because pigs are usually coming in down here. We might have to shift around, but it could also be these trees here, just uh, changing up the way the wind works out here. Surprising outcome for field number one. Uh, it's close to 10 o'clock right now and uh, we haven't seen anything. We've heard two or three different squeals, different directions, but nothing came in. And the mosquitoes are bad tonight, so I'm gonna wrap up here for now move to the other field. It's about a 30 minute drive, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. And uh, try our luck there. I'm hoping that that field is cut and just crawling with hogs. And then depending how that goes, we were planning on doing a pretty long night tonight anyways. We might as well stop by here on the way back and see if they're just uh, behind on this schedule right now. And full moon up there, pretty bright. So we had the new field and as we pulled in we saw actually a truck in the middle of the field, somebody sitting in the back and uh, we wanted to go check that out, um, had a quick conversation with that gentleman and he didn't have any night vision and or thermal vision, also wasn't shooting suppressed and uh, I think he decided that shooting 
just under the moonlight it's probably not a good idea so he left um, now we out here and we have a few lone, lone pigs out there I think I've seen at least I mean one boar I don't know if there's any, any more out there right now but a bunch of deer and we're going to try to get around um, we thought about just sending in Chet Lee and he's just gonna um, confuse his way through but <laughs> oh, Leroy Jenkins that <laughs> Uh, so, take the can am go around. Um, you have to be careful with the houses behind the trees, so we want to sh be shooting you know, towards the safe direction. So, we're going to go out of our way, but the wind is in our favor. I'm leaning towards just freaking gunning it in the can am and try to get as close as possible. I think Micah doesn't like that, so we might as well just get up to two, three hundred yards There's and then holes out there. get out. What? Worry about those trenches out there. There are some holes in there in that field. I mean, so it would probably be not very smart to do that uh, if I want to hang on to my investment here. So, um, well, let's park somewhere and then go by foot and see if we can get that hawk. See you in a bit. close to the boar but he kept pushing hard we went after him there's lots of elevation in between so we had we got close enough but then he disappeared behind the next hill so we had to keep going keep going I think it was like what 120 yards 120 yards uh, Chet Lee is shooting a 6.5 grand though. Micah is shooting at 7.62 by 39 by 7.62 by 40 Wilson combat with that LaRue suppressor sounds like a freaking bazooka and uh, I shot my 300. So let's go check him out. Nice shot. One, two. Is that a third right there? No, I think, I think I missed. Big the tunnels. Don't forget hit by something. Huh? Yeah, there's no wound unless it's on the other side. You just survive the car hit. It jaw sounds like it's busted. Yeah. I mean, it would have to be somewhat recent. Yeah. Because I mean, it's not. Take us dislocated. So. Our uh, trusty wheat field was a bust. Well, not completely. We shot two hogs. One of them was injured, and the other one looked bigger in the thermal than it turned out to be, but still two hogs on the ground. But nothing else, like tons of deer, like tons of deer, but no hogs. Now, back to the, the wheat field where we started on the way back, and there's two lone boars down there, or two lone, lone hogs. And uh, like I said, they look like a pretty decent size, so we are going to try to get to them now. 